right, Spider-Man. What the hell? It's okay, Topher, there's nothing to worry about. Anyways, welcome back, true believers, and all you vicious Venom fans out there to another Venom-related video. Now, I've already done two specific Venom videos. The first one I did was talking about the top five reasons on why I think you should be hyped for the movie, and my second recent video was talking about the problems that could happen if the movie actually does turn out to be a good one. Now, even though I talked about the possible problems that could happen if the movie does turn out to be good, I still think that Sony should try their very best to make this the best Venom movie possible, and I think I have the possible solutions on how they can make it. So. so the first thing that Sony has already done in order to make Venom a good movie is actually hiring an actor who could fully portray the character in the best way possible while also having their own passion to the character themselves. And what I mean of course is the one and only Tom Hardy. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck am I? Who the fuck is this? So even though Topher Grace was very excited to be portraying Venom in Spider-Man 3, he wasn't as passionate towards the character as someone like Tom Hardy is. Tom Hardy has already stated that he's going to do his very best to give us the best possible Venom he can possibly muster while Topher Grace back in the Spider-Man 3 days, just said he was very excited to be taking the role. Just look at the major differences between Topher Grace and Tom Hardy talking about their characters. There's no limit uh, to what you can do as a bad guy, and it's the same when we're working here on the game. When you're a protagonist, kind of a bell will go off in your head when you're going outside the realm of reality. But I never heard that bell, because I'm like a, you know, half jerk, half uh, psycho uh, killer alien from outer space. <laughs> so, who's to say what that guy would do? He's not just a... a a quintessential cookie cutting hero. He's he's a, an, an, in much the way an anti hero. Um, <clears throat> he's an interesting hero um, because he has a he has a lot of baggage, as it were. There's a lot of things that that don't meet the eye initially with him. He's a sort of a a, 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 a cauldron of of neurosis, as it were, and problems, and real world problems, and sadness, and and. Uh, He's, um... He's an interesting hero to play. Now, even though that interview segment from Tom Hardy was from Mad Max Fury Road, you can definitely understand how Tom Hardy has a really great understanding of the character that he's playing, where Topher Grace was just very excited to be part of a really awesome movie. And up to this moment, we haven't heard or seen a lot about the behind-the-scenes action that's been going on with Tom Hardy acting as Venom. However, Matt Tolmack, as well as Tom Hardy's personal trainers, have had the privilege of talking about Tom Hardy portraying Venom in the movie. Eddie Brock is an incredible character and a gritty, real, authentic, um, funny but also embittered character and a truth teller who has made mistakes and you know Tom it's like a master class watching him act yeah. every day and he's such a risk taker um, and he loved this character from the day that we you know first met with him you know my partner Avi Arad and I we found someone who just just believed in this in this character entirely and yet you know every day pushes it to a place that us mere mortals would never, you just would never expect it to go. And he, he, he just has crazy integrity about it. Yeah. Um, and so he challenges everything we're doing in the, in the most brilliant way. Um, yeah, he's not a paycheck job kind of guy. When he gets no, in it, I so. Mean, for him, it's like, I, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it and do it and give it its due. Because, you know, the love that the fans have for that character is is profound, um, and he shares it. So it's 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 really exciting, and I don't want to say too much. No, I couldn't be more excited. Yeah, but yeah. eventually we'll reveal things, and and it will be special. I'm just setting the plan. Tommy's doing the work, and what the world is going to see is one of the darkest, most powerful supervillains that Marvel's ever created. It's gonna be carnage. And given what you heard from them, I think we are definitely in for a real treat when we see Tom Hardy as Venom in the movie. Now, the second thing that Sony has to absolutely nail in order to make Venom a good movie is the proper representation of Eddie Brock. He's busy. Oh, no, I'm just here to talk to you, beautiful. What's that smell? That's a little something called nice and easy. What's on you? That's bait. So if you have already seen my previous Venom videos, you'll know that I've already kind of covered this topic, but just to recap it a bit, Topher Grace's Eddie Brock was trying to be a mirror opposite to Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker in Spider-Man 3. This is why both of them worked at the Daily Bugle and that they shared similar goals, just like Eddie Brock says to J. Jonah Jameson in this scene right here. I want a staff job, sir. I have a girl that I intend to marry, and uh, I guess, I don't know, I have this stupid little dream of working with one of the greatest newspaper editors of our time. J. Jonah Jameson. 
And what we know so far from the Venom movie is that they are doing a fully new incarnation of Eddie Brock and Venom that we've never seen before, specifically one where Eddie Brock is a journalist, where he possibly has cancer and also has a military background, which would be very interesting to see if they can blend these three hybrid origins of Venom, Anti-Venom, and Agent Venom all together into Eddie Brock slash Venom in the movie, which I think would be really cool to see, since this is much more accurate to the comics where Eddie Brock has his more journalistic roots, he lives in San Francisco in the Lethal Protector comics, and he also has cancer at some point in his life, which I think if they were to do it properly in the movie, it could end out really, really well. So the third point Sony has to nail in order to make Venom a good movie is to really showcase the symbiote's different powers that it has from the comics. Now, I don't specifically want to go into full detail about this specific topic just yet because as you can see on screen right now, this is the video I'm going to be doing in the future on where I'm going to be discussing whether the Venom movie can work without Spider-Man if it does turn out that Spider-Man is not in this movie. But just to slightly mention, in Spider-Man 3, Venom had all the powers of Spider-Man with extra strength and the ability ability to dodge Spider-Man's spider sense. Whereas with Tom Hardy's Venom, we have no idea how it's going to play out. However, I think we should see a mix between the standard 616 Eddie Brock's Venom as well as the Ultimate Comics Eddie Brock's Venom. One of the reasons why I say 616 Eddie Brock should be implemented into the movie is because in the comics, Eddie Brock was able to use the symbiote as a method of camouflage because the symbiote was able to shapeshift into different clothes. That way, Eddie Brock could go back and forth between being Venom and standard Eddie Brock. However, I mainly want them to implement the Ultimate version of Venom because this was the giant, bulky beast Venom that we all know and love, plus he just used a crazy amount of tendrils and he was able to feed off of people so that way the symbiote or the suit wasn't able to feed off of Eddie Brock's own life force. This was portrayed perfectly in the Ultimate Spider-Man video game and if we see Venom actually feed off of people in this movie, I think that would be absolutely crazy. Especially since this is a rated R movie, I think that could be even better, but we'll get into that a little bit later. And for the fourth reason how Sony can make this a good movie is what I brought up in one of my previous videos, but it is mainly because the duality complex between the symbiote and Eddie Brock is going to be a big focal point for this movie, specifically since the tagline of the movie is we are venom from, from now on, on we are poison to peter parker and spider-man we're Venom! One of the reasons why I love Venom so much is because of how Eddie Brock and the symbiote formed together to create the entity of Venom. And that's what really disappointed me in Spider-Man 3 where Topher Grace's Venom just simply said I instead of we. However, I can guarantee you that we are going to get some great scenes between Tom Hardy's Eddie Brock as well as the symbiote because of the set videos that we've seen. Now, even though it looks like Tom Hardy is going insane in all these set videos, what it looks like to me is that we are going to get some great scenes between Eddie Brock and the symbiote trying to take control of each other's bodies. Meaning that Eddie Brock might try and take control of his own body while the symbiote might can take control of his own mind. So I don't know how that's going to work out, but I'm just really excited to see how the Wii complex of the symbiote is going to be implemented in this movie. Now, the second to last point on how Sony can make this a great movie is actually because of the rating that the movie has, which is a solid R rating. Now, even though all the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies were all PG-13, there were actually great elements of horror implemented into each movie, specifically in Spider-Man 3 with the scene with Venom. But since Tom Hardy's Venom movie is rated R, they can go the extra mile and give us some truly horrific and terrifying scenes with Venom, from the way he looks, to the things that he does in the movie, from the way he sounds, to all the action that's going to be going down with Tom Hardy and Venom, fighting all these awesome bad guys in the movie, which is I'm really excited for and seeing how they can play it out. And the final point on how Sony can make this a good movie is how Venom actually looks in the final film. <laughs> Now, even though I might be asking a bit too much with the giant Godzilla-sized Venom, I think we are going to get the standard, huge, massive, bulky Venom that we all know and love. This is mainly because Sony have stated that they are going to deliver the Venom that all the fans truly recognize, and one of the trainers kind of let it leak that Tom Hardy is actually going to be turning into a quote-unquote 8'4 beast. He's definitely going to live up to the character because, I mean, he's dealing with uh, a guy that turns into an 8'4 beast. Now, even though he may just be referencing the comics, I do think that that is actually going to be the actual height of Venom in the movie. So I'm already reassured that Venom in the final film is going to look absolutely horrific and fantastic all at the same time, and I just can't wait to see how Tom Hardy is going to be implemented into this giant, massive creature. But anyways, guys, those are all my thoughts on how I think Sony can make Venom into a really good movie. Let me know what all your thoughts are in the comment section down below. Do you have anything else to add on how Sony can make this a good movie, or do you think that this movie is just doomed to fail? I don't know. I'm just really excited for it, and I just can't wait to see more of this movie coming soon. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay vicious, Venom fans. Peace out. Who the fuck are you? Who the fuck am I? Who the fuck is this? We're Venom! <laughs>